It's the time of year for us to set up breeding groups. Our ewes are in heat and they're ready to be bred. And because we register our stock, we have to have one ram with a group of ewes separated in their own private breeding group so that we can register the pedigree. Simply put, we have to figure out which of these rams to put with which of these ewes. The very first thing we have to establish is what our breeding goals are for that year and for the long term. Our table stakes goals are always to have very fine crimpy wool, well conformed sheep with good health. But then there's other traits such as staple length, color mix, and fleece density that we are always trying to refine and hone. These are traits that we can control depending on how we set up our breeding groups. Once we agree on what we are trying to accomplish, we sit down and use index cards for each sheep. Then we organize the cards into the groups while trying to ensure that the pairings we set up will allow us to achieve our goals while also considering their genetic lines. Then we set up the plan for the day. We are using six rams this year, so there is going to be much shifting and moving, and it is very helpful if everyone is on the same page with a well laid out plan. This is a very physical job. This year we are breeding 35 ewes to 6 rams, so we're going to need 6 separate pens which are going to allow us to trace the pedigree. We need a pen for the ram lambs that aren't being bred, a pen for adult rams, and a pen for sheep we're not going to be breeding. <laughs> the breeding groups will stay together for 4 weeks enough for the ewes to go through two cycles of approximately 17 days. So for the next four weeks, we're gonna be taking care of nine pens. Then we're gonna break up the groups, wait for the 147 days of gestation for mid-April or so when the lambs begin to arrive. So I'm here with Rich, and I thought it would be a really interesting segment for us to just have a conversation about the animals that we're breeding with and talk about the, their traits and what we like about them and stuff. So Rich, I think it'd be a really fun thing to just go through the, the rams, um, since they're, you know, obviously very important when you're looking at breeding groups. So what you can't have one without it. Yeah. <laughs> so we start with Loki. Um, Loki's one of our black rams. He's got a nicely sized group of about nine ewes. And what can you tell us about our ram Loki? Loki is a black ram. He's a two year old. And we we originally didn't breed him as a yearling, I, I think, didn't we? Yeah, I don't think we did. I think. So we, we hung on to him because we liked him. Uh, he's a black ram. We were trying to get more black Shetlands in our flock. So we kept them and we didn't use them, but then I looked at them as a yearling and I said, oh, this guy's really good, we should be using them. So then we did use them last year. This year he's two, and um, he's an interesting pedigree. He's out of RU Eleanor, who's out of Egyptian Autumn in Pearl. Now anyone that's followed our blog or followed us on Facebook knows that we have a lot of offspring from Pearl and she's been a big part of our flock. So I'm not surprised that, you know, 
that Loki is a second generation pearl essentially. And Egyptian Autumn is another interesting sheep that we have. He's out of Blue Sapphire and Egyptian King. So this goes back a ways, but Egyptian Autumn was a very, he was very fine. And, it wasn't very fine. He was fine, bordering on super fine. I think he was super fine. But he was very, he had a fine crimp. So that was interesting. And Loki's got that. So on the sire side, Rush is his father, uh, OK Acres Rush, who we used two years, I believe. And uh, just an interesting sheep. He's on a smaller side. And I like that about him. Um, just that we're trying to breed for smaller Shetlands to get them uh, more like the UK Shetlands, what you would find in the UK. And the whole intent of our program is to get more aligned to where the, sh the Shetlands are truly supposed to be and how they would look at the in the best UK flocks. So we're focusing on fleece, obviously, but we're trying to make sure we don't get too big or too small. Uh, bulky, I think, is right in there, right in that mix. Mm -hmm. So he's getting a good sized group this year, just like he did last year. What color was Egyptian Autumn? Egyptian Autumn was a fawn cat mug. It was, okay. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so the next group is um, John Snow, I believe, is who you've got on mm -hmm. there next. Yeah, John Snow is a great cat mug that we have uh, and have had for a number of years. Um, he is um, four years old now. And he's a lighter cat mulget, so we tend to breed for the darker, kind of dark, steely gray. He's very light, almost white colored, light silvery. Um, but one thing we've always liked about a couple of things. First of all, he was very fine. I remember when Jen was spinning with him the first time as lamb fleece. She's like, oh, this is really fine. And I said, we didn't even have micron results yet on him. So when we got him, he was in the low, like 20 microns or something like that. Um, right now, it's four years old. He's still... He has a spinning fineness of 21.9, which for a four-year-old is pretty rare in a Shetland. But the other thing we like about him is he's crimpy, but he's also, he has a finer crimp, but he also has a very, uh, very long, a longer fleece, longer than some of our Shetlands in our flock. So we've used him a lot because we're trying to get more longer fleeces and, and keep the fineness. So he's helped us, helped us with that. Uh, we certainly got a lot of fine sheep out of him. And the fleeces are getting longer, so we're not sure how long they need to be. We're, you don't want to stay in a three to five inch range. Well, um, it's nice to have longer staple because that means more wool per sheep that you're feeding, right? So, and plus that it's a lot easier to spin. One of the things about John Snow that I really like is that he roos really easily. So by that I mean the wool comes off really easily and I don't know if that's a trait that he can pass on to his offspring but if he can I see that as a big benefit. Yeah rooing is a primitive trait um, so I you know I wouldn't say well this sheep doesn't roo so it's no it's no good but I do think it is a primitive trait that you want you would like to have and certainly we like to have. Mm -hmm. Um, the downside of that is it roos whenever it wants to. You don't have really have a, <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, they'll right. develop a rise, and sometimes with him it's in January, so it's not really the time you want to be out there ruining sheep and plucking it off. <laughs> so we have to try and hold on, but a lot of times this fleece falls off before we can get all of it. There's just nothing you can do about that. It's just too cold to, um, to, to manage any other way. The other th interesting thing about Jon Snow is his comfort factor is 97.4%. So comfort factor is the percent of fibers when you send in the samples for the micron testing. And I'll talk about that with a couple of the rams. You send it in and they measure all of the diameters and they say, well, how, how, what percent is less than, a, less than 30 microns? So in this case, 97.4, which in an adult Shetland is really exceptional. Uh, pretty rare, actually. Uh, his CRV, which is a measure of the fineness of the crimp, is 91.7, which is also fantastic for a for an adult Shetland, certainly one four years old. So that's kind of a nickel tour of, of Jon Snow. This pedigree, uh, he's out of Mr. Darcy, who interesting enough had a very dark steely gray cat mugget fleece. And that's why we were breeding with him because we really wanted to get more of that. Because he was so dark at birth we thought he was black. I mean he was just really, really dark. Um, so Mr. Darcy is out of Genoa, who's in our flock. Um, very, she's very dark. Uh, Western Pines Canterbury, who's a pearl son, 
And then on the other side, we have some uh, artificial insemination genetics. So uh, his mother uh, is English Gardens, who was born here on our farm. And she was she's out of Little Buckaroo, who was an F1 Jericho, who we did AI on a U. We did an AI on um, Persia, who's sheltering pines Persia from, from that farm. Um, and then we got Buckaroo, and we bred him to a couple of... We bred him to... A couple of ewes, but a task in particular, I was looking for, I was trying to get a nice comp conformed lambs out of that breeding because he had good legs, uh, she has good legs, and we thought that we'd get a good confirmation, and we did. Um, fleece wise, you know, English Guard is not the, has the best, doesn't have the best fleece in our flock, but she is a, she's a lighter gray cat mugget, very similar to Jon Snow. But that just shows you with some focus breeding, breeding Mr. Darcy, who was extremely fine, super fine, to a U that was a little bit higher in micron. And then we got Jon Snow, who's, like I said, 21.9 microns, which is very low. Mm -hmm. um, so just in one generation, we're able to get that kind of improvement. So that's, that's pretty exciting when you can do that. Um, Mr. Darcy was even finer than that, even. He was in his teens, I think, maybe 20, 19, 20, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's English kinda... Garden, her fleece has got the long staple length. She's just got a higher micron count, but I mean, her, yeah, it's but a we... dense fleece as well. But I think her micron is like 27 microns she, or something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, right. And 28 right. is the maximum threshold, right, for comfort level, for prickle well, factor. Well, I mean, 30 microns is the wool standard. So you, and okay. you'd like all your fibers to be less than 30 microns. Okay. Um, some of hers are not less than 30 microns, but on average, her micron was like 26, 27. Um, I won't go into any more detail about that, but there's a okay. lot of... So, we talked about Jon Snow and Loki. Let's talk about the white ram we're going to be using this year, Harry. Harry we used last year as well. Uh, we really liked him as a lamb. So, we... He was extremely fine. So I don't have his last year's micron, but his yearling micron test from his first fleece was 16.9 spinning factor, spinning fineness, 100% uh, comfort factor. So it gives you a kind of an indication. Um, he's, you know, he's not really considered an adult. He's a yearling. He'll be two in the spring, uh, but we are in a second fleece now. And he's a curvature 95.1, which is again a measure of the fineness of the crimp. Higher is better. I shouldn't say higher is better. Higher is tinier crimp, not necessarily better. More, more but, what we're shooting yeah. for. Yeah. And then he has a coarse edge mean, which I haven't talked about much, but I have in the past, of 6.4. Coarse edge mean is a kind of a measure of double coatedness. So you, the lower number kind of means, well, there's less of a double coating, more single coating. Um, and I'm not going to get into all the, what actually that means, but... Um, Generally speaking, we look for a lower number. I don't look at that that much because most of our Shetlands are have low coarse edge mean CEMs. Another way to say that. Um, but looking at spinning fineness, comfort factor, CRV, those are the things I look at. Um, if you were to boil down your micron reports to three variables, those would be the three. So Harry had a he had a smaller group last year, and all of them produced, from what I recall. So this year we actually are rewarding him. He's getting the one of the bigger groups, um, eight sheep. And because he's white, we've got the expectation, right, that hopefully we get more white lambs because white is that dominant pattern, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to have too many white sheep, but we did want to build up the number of white, fine white sheep that we have, or super fine white sheep. There aren't a lot of them around. Uh, we've had a tough time. Just like the blacks, they also seem to be a tougher color to get uh, fine sheep on. So when we say we're trying to breed for fine UK style Shetlands, we're trying to get them in all colors. And I find white and black to be two of the rarer colors to get fine sheep in. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to breed for more of those, have more to sell, but also just make sure we have a good stock of whites in our flock so that we don't have happen what happened several years ago where we had one and uh, we lost that sheep, and then we didn't have any whites. Yeah. You can't get white unless you have it in your flock. Right. So, the proportions are what we're trying to adjust. Yeah. Right? Okay. Cool. All right. So the next one, um, very popular ram when I do my Facebook live feeds and different stuff, and that would be um, Freya's black yuglet ram. 
Want to talk about him for a minute? His father, Frederick, is out of Jon Snow and Brienne of Tarth. So Brienne is also a very finely crimped ewe. She's Morit. Um, so we were trying to, to get more offspring out of her. Uh, Frederick, when we when he was born, we said this this sheep looks really. He's got he had a very finely crimped fleece. His confirmation was outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, he had everything you would want really, uh, except he was a fawn, which we had enough of. We didn't really want to breed with fawns, but we just thought he was too good not to breed with. So we did give him a group last year, and Smiley, as Jen just said, <laughs> is is a black yuglet out of out of Frederick and Freya. Now Freya's interesting. Because she's out of um, blue sapphire, right? Yeah, she's out of blue sapphire, who was one of our first fine, super fine Shetlands. She was born here, so she's farm raised here. Um, it's interesting though, is that uh, Smiley his spinning finest is 23 microns for a his lamb uh, micron because he's not a yearling yet. That's higher than we would normally use. We don't like to use, you know stuff over 21, 22 microns. But you have to look at the whole sheep and decide what, what you want to do. So in his case, his fleece is very dense. He's conformationally very good. Um, now his fleece itself, other than being dense, like I said, I don't like the fineness of it as much. The comfort factor is 90.6%, which is higher than we would normally use. His curvature or crimp is 97.4, which is still really good. Um, of course, that mean is 9.1. So he's, I wouldn't call him the total package, but he has so many good things, and I like his bloodline a lot. Uh, Blue Sapphires is out of a ram called Blue's Clues that, was, that we have, that we bought from Sheltering Pines. Um, so when you look at his pedigree, I talked about Frederick being very super fine. His whole pedigree, um, Frederick's whole background is all super fine. So when you look for well, why is Smiley higher micron and that's because it comes from his mother's side. Freya was Smiley's mother. Freya um, I like because she's out of Blue Sapphire um, and Rush. Okay Acres Rush that I already talked about. So she was super fine Freya was. I, I don't have her age on here. It looks like she was two years old this year. Um, still super fine. Her mother was super fine, but on the upper end of that because again, she was our first fine Shetland yeah. So super fine Shetland. So I like uh, Freya was very much like her mother in appearance very spotted very flashy um, And then her parents are uh, Blue Sapphire's father was Blue's Clues and Onyx Velour both sheltering pines sheep uh, Blue's Clues would have had an excellent fleece very dark blue steel gray fleece and Onyx Velour was more of an intermediate type fleece. It was still fairly fine, but had a little bit higher, a um, little bit more second coating in the intermediate. And I think we're picking up a little bit of that in Smiley. Not the, not the second coat as much as a little bit higher microning. Right. So the sheltering so. pine stuff, Those that farm is one of the pioneers here in the States in terms of pursuing finer fleeces, right? So, I mean, we were kind of partnering with them in the beginning when we decided to convert our stuff over to finer. So back when we first started doing, not Shetlands, but trying to breed for fine Shetlands, there weren't a lot to be had. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to get fine, welcome for sheep. That was our starting flock. And then gradually get finer. So we were fortunate with a few of the sheep that we picked up and we have been able to get finer with that base stock. So that's, that's kind of how we ended up where we are. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't always have you know, a flock full of super fine sheep like yeah. we do now. Worked really hard to get here. All right, so there's two lambs, ram lambs, that we're giving a breeding group to. And um, one thing I want to say about the numbers that we're talking about when we talk about the ram lambs is that's based on like three months of growth, right? Rather than most of our other micron data where we are using a full year. So it's kind of like you just use what you can get and... I don't know if that seems to be consistent with the full fleece, the numbers. Yeah, so when we, we do our initial microns, usually early September, and what we'll find is the fleeces haven't grown that much. I wait till then because it really, the, sheep, the fleeces don't start, start to show their character, the type of fleeces, the style, until you get to be that age. 
but it grows a lot after that. So th the length of sample that we're getting is small compared to what it is in the spring when we do the sample. Now I haven't seen the average micron change much even though the fleece is longer at least in our flock and again most of ours are single coated um, so the numbers that I've seen have, if anything have gone down from oh, okay. spring okay. to fall but it's not that much of a difference no. um, certainly not seeing it grow a lot over the winter it seems to be wherever we test in the fall seems to be the same CRV spinning fact fineness um, comfort factor seems to be similar I'm not seeing much that changes from fall to spring. Okay. So that's why we started sampling and t testing and speeding the fall so we can get an idea whether that ram's even one we want to keep. So when we saw Smiley's numbers, we were like, oh, his are the worst ones, which they were out of everything we tested. But 23 microns is still nothing to no, it's not bad. sneeze at. <laughs> so you got to say, well, what use can we put him with that can really give us something that maybe we don't have yet? So that's what we generally try to I'm do. I'm excited about that, that ram. Okay, so let's talk about, who do you got there next? Yuki. Yuki. Let's talk about Yuki's ram. We had, obviously, we had a, a lot of ram lambs yeah, this so year. Ram and we had to find a way to pare it down, and we had to do a lot of that before we even got micron testing data. But I think there was 10 that we kept. We did the micron testing. Yuki, fawn, he's a fawn cat monkey ram. We really liked him. He was at the top of the list even when he was first born. We said this one's going to be good. We thought he would be. You never know for sure. <laughs> and there was another one out there too that we're going to talk about that we also thought was going to be good. And they still look really good. They've really matured. Great confirmations. The nice wide back ends that we're trying to breed into our flock. Um, and his micron numbers really were a little bit surprising to me. Spinning fineness of 18.0. Uh, comfort factor of 99.9, .9, CRV curvature of 111.9, which is very finely crimped, and then of course a coarse edge mean of 6.3. So which that's is, like kind of just the profile of what we want, right? That in terms yeah, of micron numbers. Yeah, I don't know what is how long his fleece is going to be when we in the fall or in the spring when we shear them and look at that. Well, Yuki has a nice long staple length. Yeah, and Yuki is one of our ewes that we really li have always liked, even though she's a fawn. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we haven't really right. talked about her or even paid that much attention to her because she's a fawn. But when I first saw her lamb yarn spun up, it's like, wow, this is really nice. <laughs> so um, it was good to get a ram lamb out of her. Certainly always looking to get ewes, ewe lambs out of these sheep. But um, there's benefit in having ram lambs because now you can breed more ewes to that and get more, perhaps more yukis out of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a really good one that we're looking forward to using. How many are we using him on? He's getting nine ewes this year, and it's kind of an even mix of brown and black-based ewes. So it's pretty... I'm really excited that we're giving him so many so many ewes. We actually. don't usually do that on lambs, ram lambs. I would hardly ever give them more, three, than four, three or four, um, just because you don't have any data on them. You don't know how well they're going to breed, reproduce, you know. Rarely, we've hardly ever seen a, a ram sterile, but... I think, I think it happened one time. Yeah. So you don't want to give 12 sheep to a ram like proven. that and they're all open. So you've lost a year of breeding with those ewes. So this is a risky one. Um, you always calculate the risk. If the ram's really good, you take a shot at it because um, you just don't know what's going to happen. So the last thing I would say about Yuki's ram is that his, his father is Knightley, who's a ram that we really liked here. And we talked about Yuki, really liked her, but Knightley complimented her well. And I, and I really liked the, the Knightley lambs, the fleeces that they were adding. They were finely crimped, they're longer, dense. Um, the only flaw with him, and the reason we didn't use him for a long time, was because he was fawn. And we didn't want to breed any more fawn sheep. Um, he's also a Canterbury son, and we use Canterbury heavily. Had a lot of use. He's out of pearl too, right? Yep. Canterbury? Yeah, Canterbury's out of pearl. So there was just a good cross that we had with, between uh, Yuki and Knightley. And then Knightley just a, was a really good ram that we used two years, I think, we used him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In spite of his color, which, you know. So what do we have next? So the last one to talk about is the ram lamb out of Audi. And he's going to get four U's. Um, he's going to get two of the whites, a black, and a gray. And he's a gray cat mugget 
really dark gray though. It's always, it's tough as a, as a, you're not even yearling jets, you're trying to say, well, this is a good ram, this isn't a good ram. Um, he's a gray cat mugget ram, so perhaps I'm biased because he is very flashy and he is a gray cat mugget, which we really like. Confirmationally, he's, he's just outstanding. He's very similar to Yuki's ram, if not better. Um, his fleece is longer. However, I don't know if in it, I don't know if it's going to be characteristic of the style that we like. The crimp is different, but you take the good with the bad. And and I don't mean it's a bad crimp because it is crimpy, but it's not that really tiny fine crimp that Yuki's ram has. But we're going to breed him, give him some use. Um, now, Audi is out of his mother is out of Nitro, OK Acres Nitro, who had a really nice fleece. And um, was for uh, wintertime Atasca, who was okay. Pearl's mother. Um, so she's a black U, and here's another another instance where we we were able to get a fawn ram bred to a black U and get something that's not fawn, which is what we were trying to do. So statistically speaking, that out uh, uh, his this ram, which we haven't named yet is a spinning fineness of 20.6, comfort factor of 97.3, curvature of 74, which is lower than the other ones we've talked about. It's just a different style of fleece, so it's, it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. It's not double coated though, it's, his CEM is 8.2. So it's still a very fine, super fine fleece, very dense. Um, the only thing I don't like about him is he has scurs. Um, okay. I don't know, but I don't really, It's still, he's a half pole. He carries a pole gene, he carries a, a horn gene. We've got so much pulled in our flock now that it's very low risk, right, that we're going to get. Yeah, he would have got the horn gene from Atasca because she carried both. Um, they're small skirts, they're not huge. Um, we'll just see how it goes. I like them a lot. We wanted to make sure we used them this year. And um, so how many use is he getting? He's getting four use. Um, and they're all, like you described, really fine. I'm just saying this, I don't know from the numbers, but from working with their fleeces, a very fine, crimpy fleece to kind of complement his more different type, I guess. Yeah, and one of the uses he's getting is Lucretia. Yeah. So I think that's all the rams I was going to talk about. Um, I want to talk about a few of the uses we're using. And she's one that I'm going to mention because... She has a lot of what we're trying to breed for. She's got a great conformation, a dense fleece. It's a, kind of a big fleece, fairly big. Um, she's one year old, so she'll be two years this spring when she lambs. Um, her spinning fineness is 20.6, comfort factor 97.7, curvature 105.8. She's finely crimped, dense, it's longer. It's pretty much exactly what we're breeding for. So we want, we're trying to get more sheep like that and we decided to breed her to Audi's ram, who's also longer, but maybe not the kind of the fine crimp that we're mm -hmm. looking for. So hopefully from that group, we'll get something that's nicely conformed and also with a really nice fleece. And she's a white you, so it'd be nice to get Yeah, and I don't really care if it's white or gray. You know, I like either one of those, mm -hmm. we're fine. Um, her mother is OK Acres Alara, who has many of those traits that she has. Um, I think Lucretia probably has a longer fleece than hers, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, density is pretty similar to both. Um, and John Snow was her father, so we probably got the longer fleece from him. So that was another cross that we did. We said, oh, let's try and combine things and see what we get, and we, mm -hmm. it seemed to come out pretty good. It doesn't always, but it did this time. So, that, so we're excited about using her, and I like that breeding, so hopefully that works out well for us. So um, then you wanted to talk about Ty, who we're going to be breeding with Loki's ram, the black solid ram. Yeah. Ty is out of Knightley, another Knightley daughter. Um, her mother is Corva, who is out of um, Nitro, and Mrs. Hughes, another one of our ewes. Um, very interesting. Ty is a Musket Smurzlet Cat Mugget. Um, so I'm not really sure. It, again, she's technically fawn, she's brown based, um, which we don't really get all that ex excited about. 
but her pedigree is really good and knightly again um, I've already talked about him just a very solid ram um, her yearling fleece is spinning fineness of 21.4 comfort factor 96.5 CRB of 101.4 so she's got all the numbers that you would look for um, very nice fleece um, and we're, we're hoping for good things out of her also her nickname is Mogwai because when she was born, she was sleeping one day, and I went out there, and she looked like Gizmo from Gremlins. So I don't know, I just started start calling her my wife for some reason. You know, I should have called her Gizmo, because that was the yeah, thing's name. she was but, super cute. So um, she's out at Corva, who we actually don't have any longer, and that was a tough one to let go. I, we really liked her, but we yeah, so we'll, keep them all. So Jen's going to show the fleece samples that we have for each of these sheep, so you can get an idea. I'm talking about them, but it would be nice to see, you can see them. Her fleece I really like. It's got everything, density, length. It's even got luster, which is something we haven't talked too much about. It is it is obviously an important Shetland trait. Silkiness is another phrase for it. Um, she has that, um, and I think we're, we're excited about that, trying to get more of that. Um, the next one would be Alice Paul. Alice Paul is another knightly daughter. She's also a fawn cat moga, spotted. Um, she is a... Um, Smurzlet, I guess I would say. A lot of white on the face. Uh, she's been featured in a lot of Jen's videos. Her mother is Gilly, who's out of Nitro, and Treviso, who was out of Pompeii Magnus, who we bred for a few years and got a lot of nice daughters that we were able to breed back to Nitro for the most part. Um, but we were trying to combine different genetic lines and different brands and come up with, you know, that right perfect combination of stuff. And she's pretty close. She's got everything, confirmation, fleece length, density, silkiness, very similar to um, Ty, who I just talked about, or Magwai, whatever you prefer. <laughs> um, so she's, she's going to be bred with Loki, the black ram, right? Yeah, so just to compare their numbers, her spinning fineness is 18.8, .8, which is exceptionally low, 99.7 comfort factor. CRV of 114.9, which I've already forgot what Ties was. <laughs> uh, ties was over 100, so uh, not quite as crimpy as this one, but they're very similar. Very similar. You look at them like, oh wow, they're really crimpy. Um, and as we've talked about before, fineness of crimp is really important when you're making yarn because it gets that elasticity that you're looking for, a, kind of the bolder crimp that you see on some, and we probably have some samples of that. Um, nothing wrong with that, but when you're making yarn, it just doesn't have the spring, the bounce that you would see with this finely crimped one. So that's why we breed for that. Again, it's a uniquely Shetland trait. Certainly Merinos have that. Cormos have that to an extent. Um, but it's something we're trying to breed more of. So this is Alice Paul's first time being bred. A sweet girl. It'll be exciting to see what she does as a mother. <laughs> And I think Tovia was the last you that we were going to talk about today. Right. And she's a Moret, not too exciting. Uh, Moret's fawns, we don't get very excited because we've always had a lot of those. Um, but she's three years old, still has a spinning fineness of 22.8, comfort factor of 92.9, CRV of 94.9. I mean, for a three-year-old you, a Shetland, those are really good numbers. Um, so we bred her to Harry last year because we were excited about kind of their fleece characteristics. And we got a ram out of that that we just sold, but we've kept them. He was one of our keepers. He's white. Um, and we're going to try that breeding again and see what we can come up with. Hopefully get some ewes out of it. Um, but either way, it should be, it should be a, a really good, good lamb. Um, yeah, so pedigree-wise, she's out of Nitro. Um, Nitro and Sybil, who was out of Canterbury, that we've talked about, and Genoa. We keep coming back to Genoa's name, shows up a lot of, Pearl's name shows up a lot, but Genoa in particular has been, we have a lot of her in our, our flock. Well, I think that's another really interesting reason why we're excited about Smiley, right? Because... As you said, we do talk about Knightley and Nitro and stuff, and Smiley, he's got a very different pedigree. So I think one of the things I wanted to make sure came through here in this segment is 
you know, it's not a haphazard, random process to put these braiding groups together. I mean, there is just a ton of information and data that Rich in particular pours over to make these decisions to make sure that we're pushing the flock forward every year, advancing, getting closer and closer to that perfect animal that, I mean, I guess somewhere it exists, but, you know, it's just, it's, so that, you can just sort of get the sense here for the amount of thought and work that goes into putting these groups together. I don't know, Rich, if you have any commentary on that whole concept. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of work that goes into it. Um, it's not just a matter of throwing sheep together. I mean, as you'll see in this video, we spend a lot of time going over our index cards, going over what do we really want to get out of this breeding. You always think of what's the lamb that you want to get in your mind's eye. So that's, you put, say, all right, which ram gives us the best chance with this ewe? And like I said, it doesn't always work. I mean, it probably works 10, 20% of the time. Do you get something out of it you think is what you were trying to do. So are you actually picturing, I mean, I, I see you looking up and this, when you talk about your sheep, you can actually, are you, can you picture, you know, what Egyptian autumn looked like? And I mean, you still have that. Uh... Yeah, and, and we, we talked about trying to find, the, trying to build the perfect Shetland. And back in the day, Egyptian autumn was like the first one we had, probably that he was out of Blue Sapphire, who was our first super fine Shetland but she didn't have the fine crimp that he had. So he had extremely tiny crimp, very not unlike Frederick, who I talked about, um, a few of our other sheep. Now it wasn't a four inch long fleece, it was on the shorter side of the three to five inch uh, goal that we have, but extremely finely crimped. So I think back to those and you say, oh, that was at the time seemed really good and we've far surpassed that now. Mm -hmm. So we've taken that and we've added a bunch of other things like longer fleeces, he was dense, so I don't know that we really improved on that with him. Um, but he was a big improvement on his mother in terms of density. Um, not so much fleece length because he was a little bit shorter. But um, you just keep trying the combinations, and we've gotten better at it over the years, what we think will happen. Shetlands are a, a bit of an enigma, though, because there's so much in their pedigree that you don't understand. And so they'll throw back to things that you primitive characteristics that maybe we don't want um, but that that doesn't happen frequently it's just that you can't really predict what you're going to get out of a given breeding you think you know what you want and it doesn't always happen that way there's just too many things in the background that that uh, appear later on several generations down the road so a lot of information we covered today a lot to unpack if any if you have any questions or want to get more information please leave a comment below or you can contact us um, at our email and you know be happy to share more information if this wasn't <laughs> enough which i can't imagine so thanks a lot for stopping by and we'll see you next time So this is Saturday morning. We thought we'd do it on Friday, but it was the weather was too terrible. Like the <clears throat> balmy weather we have here. <laughs> exactly. And I wanted to get out early to clean out the barn because I don't like to do all this moving around when there's dirt over. I could just disappear. right now Chernobyl <laughs> I wear that because I got a really bad chest cold once from the dust in the barn now the sheep are all locked outside right now that's our new tractor we just got finally got delivered after six months, six months of waiting and this technique is something that Rich invented I don't go quite that fast, though. <laughs> I know it. There's three sections of the barn that you got to clean out. I usually get 
get two loads. Well, you're not messing around. <laughs> I wasn't driving the tractor that fast either. I almost got stuck the first load. Why? I got it. I slid in too far. The ground isn't frozen yet, so it's kind of... She's driving really recklessly, isn't she? <laughs> the west side of the barn that I'm cleaning right now. So this was something we had to do. We had to put plywood over this gate so that we could have an, a separated pen for Yuki's ring. It's good that you got Bigfoot to help you. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's the board we use for shearing. And then we had to put this board down along the gate there so that they couldn't get access to hay. So we just prep work we had to do. And then we had to break it down this pen that the ram lambs were using over the summer to get more grass to eat and use those panels for Harry's pen. It's fascinating, isn't it? Is he liking it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sabrina's watching. get so much use out of these panels. Yeah. You even got Bigfoot driving a tractor. Oh, stop about the Bigfoot. You look like Bigfoot. Everybody should have their own Bigfoot. There's all the ewes there on the side. I have no idea what's in store for them today. They haven't eaten yet. I wanted to make sure they were hungry so we could get them to move easier. I'm They're thoroughly them. confused. I know. <laughs> this is not the procedure. And that's where I'll go side panels. Yeah. Remnant, I want to keep this door open. Bigfoot taking directions. Well, all this was all written out, all the steps for the things we had to do. There was like 35 different steps. Because we're using six rams. I'm getting exhausted just watching. I know. It. I'm stressing out too. It's very complicated. You'd look like Bigfoot there, really. Well, it's because of those boots you got. Sure, that's the reason. Clumpy elf. <laughs> so we have to set this little pen up inside that pen because we didn't put ply. We didn't have a piece of plywood for that other gate, so we had to keep them separated. All right. So here we are moving the yearling rams from the brown hutch there into this pen here on the right that I wrecked the door on last year and Rich had to fix. So the plan was we had to move Frederick and Pearl's Morit Ram into this pen because we're not breeding with them. So we're gonna just drag them over on the four-wheeler. It would a lot easier if the ground was frozen. I know that. Because that pen was really messy. I forgot what we're doing here. We are taking oh, well, this is Pearl's more at Ram. Yep. This is the first one. I forgot that we were even filming this. This is 
surprising lack of swearing in this moment. Found best behavior, I think. Now, Jon Snow is going out of his mind because that ram is over there. He's just like, what's up? It's just like the prison when they introduced the new prisoner. <laughs> Both sides of that gate were unlatched. That was a curse word there. I bleeped it out. Oh. <laughs> and this is Frederick. So he didn't get a breeding group this year. So it has a latch, but it's just not, it doesn't work right for... Well, that one year, rams smashed right through it, because I didn't have it tied. So, didn't want that to happen again. And it should do it. Nice and secure. Now, Rich is dragging the dog crate. So we used a large Labrador dog crate to keep those two rams situated until we got used more. That's Loki and Harry in there. This gate was frozen shut to the ground. That took some doing. Good thing I had Bigfoot with me. Ebony and I do. Harry's white. Oh, great. Loki's, Loki's black. So now I'll let all the girls in. So we gotta, because we gotta sort them out. So these are all the used lambs, retired, everybody. And both sides are shut off right now. So they still haven't eaten. And they're all like, what in the world is going on? Where is the hay? Okay, so we'd already separated all the Loki's ewes. That's these are the ones that we're breeding with Loki, and we got to run them all the way out past two pastures and a shed to get them on the far of this pasture, which is really ridiculously ambitious. You're always catching my good side. Hey, somebody got some hay. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing hay. That's Open my, it. Because they haven't eaten yet. Oh. Sorry. Okay, open it. Oh, we lost. Did you bleep that out, too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get out of the way. There's Jon Snow going out of his mind. All right, so here's the first pasture I got to get him through. Yeah, with all the steps we had, <clears throat> surprisingly, isolating Jon Snow wasn't in one of them. Because he was right there on the edge of that I know, that was really risky. There he is. So they all went very nicely. So who was it that didn't Mrs. go? Mrs. Hughes. Yeah. There's always one. Oh, she was making me furious. She knows better. I'm nervous now the other ones are going to come through. I'll lose all my progress. Yeah, they're usually pretty easy to get out once, once you lose them. 
It's taken me like an hour at different times to get those rams coordinated. You know, I'm trying to get them in there. What is so hard? They're all over there. I had to have been using choice words here. I don't remember though. A couple. That was really good advice. Ah, uh, all I gotta do is get her in the other one now. <laughs> well, this is the problem: is they hate going through like gates or enclosures and stuff. Remember the old days? I had to drag them over one by one into the breeding pens. And I devised that other way to put the fencing on, temporary fencing, and let them run through there. Which wouldn't work very well for this. So Loki's got a nice big group. What's he got? Eight years? So Loki and Harry are still in the dog crate in that brown shed. Oops. No, they're going in there because we put hay in there. That was hard to film because I was carrying the tripod when I was walking. Come on, girl. Plus, I'm Bigfoot. I thought Audi was Loki. Come on. Always makes it more enjoyable when you get some zingers in there. <laughs> Somebody's in there. Yeah, there's one in there. So they gotta go around and then through the gate. It's just I'm getting all stressed out. I gotta get some right now. I'm gonna ask more. Here. Do you like this show? It's a pretty good viewing, Gandalf's all like a light now. Let's play this more often. That is so uh, outy there. And there comes Alice Paul, my good girl. Yeah, and that took about a half an hour to get him over there. I didn't put in here the one where she took the head and died. That was scary. Alright, so now we're setting up another transfer. This is going to be John or John Snow's group. They're gonna, we're going to run them through there, so we got to get them on the other side of the barn. Through that gate and around. Good thing we didn't pull those weeds, huh? Nice little barrier. You looked over there for a little bit. So we got to lock John Snow in there. Okay. Careful, otherwise the girls won't go in there if he's running around. It'll just be bedlam. Plus, he'll get out. This is my throwing skills. Which were non existent. <laughs> I didn't even go over it. So I had to do another one. <laughs> so, what do you think I'm thinking right there? I don't know. I'm thinking, how is it possible that anyone can throw this poorly? I don't know how to throw. I can't throw. I've never been able to. I can this catch really right. good. Yeah, I was praying. But I just can't throw. Never could. I guess you never considered playing softball, huh? Uh-uh. Not once. Here he is. Getting ready. They're waiting patiently. Here. 
So this is the west side of the barn. No, we didn't get to hear what she had to say. So now we're going to bring everybody comes over here, and then we separate out. I gotta catch three U's that are going into John Snow's and move them over to the other side. That's the smallest group he's ever had. Three. Yeah. He's related to too many of them. Isn't he? Mm hmm. Okay, ladies. So there they are. So they ran through perfectly fine, and we got them in there. And now I'm getting. Audi's group, I guess. Audi's ran through. And this is Harry's group. Still looking for their food. I thought there was hay in there. Uh, Isn't Seth cool looking? It's like Onyx Blue or kind of. Then we had to let out the lambs and all the retired ewes and anybody were not breeding and it was strange. Oh. I had hay out there and this is the routine every day but they were really perplexed about what they were supposed to do right now. You guys confused? The girls are all in their spaces, <laughs> right? So we needed to get Loki out. That's what we were going for here. The black one. I love him attacking me. He's kind of high spirited. And of course Harry gets out. Oh, 
You have a lock here in there for them? Opened the gate, so he got out, and we had to chase him. And he was all excited about the girls over there, but didn't really know how to get at them. <laughs> all worked up. Trying to show off. No, this is the right. I have to get done with right. So there he is out there with his ladies. So he's the one without the coat. And Dina is in heat, apparently. Oh, you want some privacy? before. It's really that easy, I guess, for Rams. There we go. A little privacy there. Okay, now it's time to release Jon Snow so he can meet his girls. the Kraken. So he did breed that white one. That's a Fabia. We wrote that down. Whenever we see him breed them, we write the date. Put Audi's ram in there with his group. Yeah, we gotta grab him. This is us trying to get him. Oh, okay, that's right. We haven't caught him yet. I was gonna say, man, he's a big group. <laughs> I forgot to bring hay, so it was kind of hard to catch him. Yeah, I remember. Careful. I'm going to charge you. Which one is he? A lot of times this is when they try to make a break for it and try to go over the top like Walter Payton. <laughs> <laughs> they can do some damage. They can knock you out. Yeah, they definitely. Because they're just trying to get out. They're not trying to attack you. I almost got clobbered one time by one ram. Okay. He tried to jump over me. Grown up girls. Have fun. Now we gotta get Yuki's. I 
almost fell over. I thought for sure you were going to go down. So he's the going to the west side of the barn. He's got eight ewes over there waiting for him. Put down yeah. my gloves. There's my glove right there. I just saw it. <laughs> we were at this till like 2.30 and you were still doing stuff after I went in. Exhausted. Yeah, we had to hook up the water buckets because yeah. it was freezing that night. The heated buckets. I was rich doing the heated buckets, but there was a bunch of other stuff. The dog crate had to get put away, and there's still a couple things we need to get done. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buckets of water monitoring now. Yeah, unless you want to say anything. No, just make it fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> 